Listen, what we have facing us coming up this year is critical for the future of the country. I think we all know that. We've been able to change this country with virtually no money, because that's not what it takes. It takes resolve, it takes people who want to work hard, and it takes that eternal vision. So, like this uh, so I'm just like you. I am somebody that... I have a house, and I pay a mortgage, and um, I don't want another one of my rights taken away. And it says everyone, you know what a smart meter is and what they're doing now, aggressively every day, digging up the roads and putting in the smart infrastructure, which is incredibly amazing that they're getting away with it. So, anyway, I've been trying to do it. I started doing this on my own, just writing letters, just telling the politicians that I, I'm, I'm opposed to smart meters. So, and that's how it all started. Um, so, first I just wanted to go through things, I put this together today, an outline of things that I want to share because I think they're really helpful because when you have some information, you know how to come back to these people when they tell you that you have to have a smart meter. So, the first thing is trespass. Radio, these radio frequency meters, and they, the, the electric radio frequency meters have the capacity, and I've read that they pulse your entire house every, up, like every five seconds. So every five seconds, what they do with, well, you'll see these beautiful glossy brochures that you're getting from PSENG and National Grid saying, we'll give you money for your old refrigerator, and if you buy a new one with one of our contractors, you'll get a great deal on a discount. That's because they have RDA, they have chips on them. And the chips work with the smart infrastructure. So what happens, trespass against your body, okay? Every five seconds, or whenever they're pulsing your house, the radio frequencies travel through the air, and they also travel through your body. And we'll get to the Constitution in a minute, but that's, a take, that's obviously unconstitutional and illegal. Again, it goes through your body every five seconds, or however, however, however often they go through. Are you saying the appliances just Okay, the way it works, just so I, because I, I'm excited to just share information because I understand how it works. So the way it works is um, you have a smart meter in your house, it's a digital meter. That meter travels through your house, the electric especially, the electric is the worst. So it travels through your house probably about every five seconds. And it goes and reads everything in your house that you're using, lamps, um, refrigerator, appliances. It's, it's, doing, it's telling the companies what you're using every five seconds and creating uh, a profile. So the new appliances have chips that interact with the smart meter. And then what happens is, so say each one of you in the audience is a house with a smart meter. Every community, you'll see these boxes they're putting on all the telephone poles. So all those smart meters interact with each other, and then they all come to me. I'm going to be the I'm the, I'm the box on on the uh, telephone pole, and then from the box on the telephone pole, they probably go to either I think either a cell phone tower or satellite. So all this is happening. So just think about it. Your yours is going first in the person in the back. Yours is being read to me. I'm the I'm the collector of the information. So it's reading. It's probably every hour. I think it goes through your house every five seconds, and then every hour, or or more often, it goes to the central location. So if you order for all of you to get your reading to me, me being the box, it has to travel through all of the people in front of you and through all your homes. So it's not just one discrete house that's getting a reading, and then it's going to a meter and then someone's driving by reading it. It's going from house to house, and anything in the way, it's going through. So I don't think anyone realizes how big an impact. I think to me, this is the clearest issue that, we faced, that we're facing in our lifetimes. To me, because what it's doing is they're taking your property rights away and your, your body rights away, and they're doing it while you pay the mortgage. So, um, so anyway, I created this outline because I wanted to keep focused. So the first thing is trespassing against your body. Secondly, air rights. Air rights are very valuable. I don't think anyone realizes when you go to Manhattan and you have air rights above your building where you can construct, you can sell them for millions of dollars because air rights, it's, the air has value because you can do things with it. 
with, with these smart meters, what they're doing is they're taking away your air rights on your property for their business and to travel through your property and make money and they're not giving us a penny back. It's, they're essentially taking away your property rights because they're using the air on your property to travel through with these RFs and make money and they're going to make a fortune. The next thing is devaluation of property. If you live by a cell phone tower and somebody's looking for a house, your, the values of your homes, if it's by a cell phone tower or anything that's got electromagnetic frequencies, the property values are less. Um, easements. They, when, when you interact with these people, they're going to tell you, well, we have an easement. And they've been sending a lot of brochures saying we have rights to your property because you have an easement, utility easement. It's true, you do have a utility easement. Utility easement has nothing to do with radio frequencies or traveling through the air. It has to do with um, traveling through wires. So the easement does not cover them. It doesn't give them justification for traveling through the air and using radio frequencies. The easement doesn't work for them. They may be putting them on, I'm sure newer homes that probably have language that would cover them for radio frequency. Um, and then the other argument you're going to get from the utility companies when you tell them you don't want a smart meter is they're going to tell you, well, we own, my mother had this. She, they came to her house, the National Grid, and they said, we want to get to the basement and put a smart meter in. She said, no. He says, well, ma'am, my mother's 82. Ma'am, you have, you have, that's our meter. We can do whatever we want. That's the argument that they're going to use, the people that they send to do this, to the installations. So the argument is, I wrote it out. The utility companies argue that they own the utility meters and can replace them. However, the utility company is delivering utilities under an easement and is given this privilege subject to obligations to safeguard property and persons and act in good faith. An easement is not just something that gives somebody the right to walk all over you. If you have a driveway easement with your neighbor, you have an obligation to act in good faith and you have an obligation to share expenses. An easement doesn't give you the right to, to trample over somebody. It comes with obligations. The next thing, they'll sell you that your meter is not a smart meter. They're going to say, I've had friends that had this happen, they call them and they say, well, it's a digital meter, but it's not a smart meter. Well, if you call the manufacturer, the manufacturer will tell you it's, it can be used as a smart meter, but they may choose not to use it as a smart meter today, but with the flip of a switch from a satellite, it's a smart meter. So it's a smart meter. Okay, so that was number one, that's trespass. It's trespass against property and against a uh, person. The next thing, it's an unconstitutional taking without due process. If you go to the Constitution, everything is so clear. To me, it's crystal clear. It says in Article 5, no person shall be deprived of life, we just talked about your, your, your body, liberty, or property, we talked about property, without due process of law, nor shall private property be taken for public use, air rights, without just, just compensation. So this is, and they've admitted, you go through the records, they, they're acknowledging that it is unconstitutional, they're just waiting for people to speak up. The next thing, it's illegal. So not, a, not only is it unconstitutional, in their own statutes, the, the United States Code says, and so we have all the protection we just need to enforce. The United States Code, Section 18, uh, Section 241, Title 18, Section 241, Conspiracy Against Rights. If two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in any state in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for not more than 10 years or both. It seems to me that we have some, uh, protect, this law protecting us because what they're doing is they're conspiring against our rights. Two or more persons, a utility company, could be any people, it could be two people. They could come to your house with the sheriff and say, you know, you need to get a smart meter. Well, they're violating the law. The next law to me is even a stronger one. Uh, Title 18, Section 242, deprivation of rights under color of law. This is huge. Whoever under color of any law, statute, ordinance, regulation, or custom willfully subjects any person in any state to the deprivation of any rights shall be fined under this title or imprisoned for not more than one year or both. Well, they're going to come back and they're going to say, well, the um, FCC says that the limits in the United States are safe. Well, the FCC is, deals with communications. They don't deal with health or safety. 
and the limits the FCC say are safe are 500, 500 times higher than the, the safety limit in all other countries, in any other country, including China. So this country's limits, and the FCC deals with communications, they don't deal with health, and they've never tested any of this. So when they come back and they, they say, well, we passed this law that says you have to take a, a cell phone tower, or you have to accept the smart meter, and the law says it's safe, so you can't question it. And they come back and do that all the time with cell phone towers. They're actually in violation of this law, which says you can't deprive rights under the color of law. So they can't pass a statute that takes away your constitutional rights. That's illegal. The, section, the, the third law is civil, so you can have a civil action for deprivation of rights. And that reads, every person who under color of any statute, again, the law, ordinance, regulation, custom usage of any state subjects or causes to be subjected, any person within the jurisdiction thereof to the deprivation of any rights, privileges, or immunities secured by the Constitution and laws is liable for the party injured in an action at law. So to recap, they're trespassing against our person, our property. Two, it's unconstitutional. Three, it's illegal. And there's, there's, there are three laws on the books to protect us. The next thing I thought important to, to point out is the increased costs. And I've never seen anyone bring this up. Everyone knows that the smart meters, when you get a smart meter, all of a sudden you, the utility bills go up 40% or more. <laughs> so they go up for 40%. California is the first. They go up exorbitantly. And you can't, you, you have no way to, um, like, you can't really follow the readings because they're not analog, so they're digital. So there's no way for you to put your head around how the, the, the rates go up so much. And this I've never heard anyone, I've never heard anyone raise this, but if you're pulsing and you're reading everything in the house every five seconds on the electric, that takes energy. And I've never heard anyone bring this argument up. That costs money. It just doesn't, you can't just pulse through the house with radio frequencies and then go to the, the satellite and you go to the, the box. And you can't do that without it costing something. And I, my conclusion is that that's the reason why these bills go up so, they go up so, so much. They go up 40%. Because it costs money to have something read every, and you'll see these when you see the smart meter, they they flash every five seconds, and you can buy one of these. I bought one of these. This will show you, like it gives you a reading and shows your radio frequencies. Like for instance, it's going to be extremely high where we are right now because there's probably Wi-Fi in this building. This should be green to be in a safe limit where it doesn't affect your reproductive capabilities and doesn't affect your cells. This should be in the green zone, like when I'm home in my house, parts of my house are green. You're with a cell phone or something, this thing goes crazy. Smart meter, this goes, and it, smart meter you'll see it goes up and down, up and down. Why is, why is it, you know, the meter's pulsing. Um, okay, so increased costs, health. I spoke about the FCC regulations allow 500 times more radio frequency than most other countries. The FCC regulations permit higher levels of radio frequency than any other industrialized country in the world, even China. So even China is more protective of their citizens being exposed to radio frequencies than here because here they allowed lobbyists from the telecommunications companies to write the legislation that was passed in the 1990s. Um, so now what do you do? Um, I don't know, but I know what, what's been working a little bit. Not and because there haven't been enough numbers. First, you must notify all, all the heads of the public utility companies and government persons in charge that you that you do not consent, because until you put it in writing and send it in, they're assuming that you have your, they have your consent because they we all know about it. It's in the newspaper. So if you don't let them know in writing that you do not consent, they, your your consent is implied. Oh, it's opt-out? And opt-out, and what the, what the utility company is doing is saying, okay, we now have to send somebody to we can do it. We're going to increase your profile. Which to me is part of the whole problem. I, it's, it's, it's not really a solution. I know you're saying, you're saying, well, yeah, they're saying that you can opt-out if you want to pay, actually, if they want to extort money from you, but why should you opt-out of something that's unconstitutional? And they told us, and I have it in writing at home, 
that we would be charged that they would uh, uh, sh turn our water off, turn our, our meter off. Turn our, I'm sorry, this is water. Was it Suffolk County Water Authority? authority or? That's yeah, yeah, it's water authority. Oh, Suffolk County Water Authority? Yes. I have to tell you, when it gets to next step, I'm going to tell you good news. Okay. Because good news, two good news. Because, because into it into I know, I know somebody else did too, but I did something I myself. Okay, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm glad you brought it up, and I'll tell you some good news. Um, so you have to, they, the public officials that, like the governor, they've all taken an oath of office. They've only promised to do one thing. That's all they promise is they support when they when they take an oath of office. They say I promise to support the Constitution. Yeah. <laughs> all you have to do is accept their oath, and this is my strong opinion, because I'm just looking for a way to stop the madness. They've taken an oath to support the Constitution. If you accept their oath in writing, then they they are obligated. There's a contract between the two of you. So if they don't honor your constitutional rights when you put them on notice, in my strong opinion, through my research then they're not protected by their title, they're personally liable because they've stepped outside their role. So what I've done is I started with writing letters, and I do this all the time, I started writing letters, certified letters, and then I got involved and it just mushrooms, we met other people, and, and then what we did is um, we created a form that we're using, um, I mean I did, I created it with somebody else. This form, and I've gone through the whole process. It's a notice in demand, and it basically is to the governor, to the head of PSENG, to the head of National Grid, to the head of um, New York Power Authority, and to the head of the New York State Public Service Commission. And I sent it out, and I put them on personally, accept their oath of office, and I tell them that they're violating my rights, and if they stop, don't stop violating my rights, I'm holding them liable for $300 million each. And so I started with this. Unfortunately, in this area, not a lot of people jumped on the bandwagon. A few of us have gone through. I've gone through the whole process. I'm the only person, because there's a three-step process. So I've done the step, all three steps. Everything's in three, just like a collection agent. They send you a bill, they send it three times, and then you're screwed. So, <laughs> so I sent it to them three times. Notice in demand, notice of fault and opportunity to cure, and then a notice of fault. The notice of fault I sent out, and I'm the only one that's finished the process, it was two weeks ago. And then all of a sudden, Suffolk County Water Authority changed their, their whole tune because there was a woman in Suffolk County um, that I'm in touch with and she was getting threatened to have her water turned off. And a few days after I sent the final notice, in, the notice of fault, um, notice of defaults, and then I put, put the head of that, uh, Suffolk County Water Authority and said, you're liable to me for $300 million. She got a phone call the next day after the letters went out, my letter, and it was then certified. And he said, we're so sorry that we, we you, I don't know why they were threatening you, but you don't have to have a smart meter. Um, I'm sorry, you know we'll never turn your water off. So it, it really is, and another woman I just spoke to today told me she had the same experience that Suffolk County Thought, Water Authority, she has the same thing in her house. They finally reversed their position and they said she already has one. They said, well, we'll, we'll, we can get it out of your house. They said only one person has gotten it out, but now all of a sudden, through the, and I'm the only one that did the full process, but a few other people, they, they, they sent the letters out. And the, so it does work. And the other thing, another good, some good information is somebody else that does the Take Back Your Power movie, Josh Del Sol. He got 20 people to do this as a team, and they did it in one package, so you don't have to go through the trouble of doing certified mailings on your own. And within a few days of sending 20 of these out in a package, um, three or two or three public officials that they sent it to resigned. And uh, somebody else got a hundred of these together in a package and sent them out as a package and they had four people resign because they don't want to be liable and they realize that they're stepping out of their box and there's liability. And again, it's, it's so clear to me, just think it's so crystal clear. They are, I mean, to me, it's just a no-brainer. They're violating, there's a constitution, still exists. There's laws on the books that said they're not allowed to pass any law or threaten us, and if they are, they're liable. And I think what we need to do is, if there's an implied consent, because they think that because we're silent, we consent, and phone calls don't mean anything, arguing with the clerk on the, you know, like you see, it gets you nowhere. So my opinion is, send out something, even if it's not this, just any letter, 
um, and just take back your consent. Make sure they know that you don't they don't have your consent. And I think it's going to work. I don't. Know, that's my optimism because I don't know of any other. I just feel like the, the gentleman that on the screen that was saying that you know if the president we get another one of these presidents um, we're going to have nothing. So. Yeah. Um, so I see two potential issues here, right? So number one, assuming you're right, you have the health issue of all these radio waves going through all your bodies and all your family's bodies and everything like that. Secondarily, you have the privacy issue, right? So if these things are pulsing through your house and knowing every time you turn on the goddamn stove, that's a privacy issue. I didn't even bring that every, up, but that's every, true. Every step you, you've alluded to really addresses only the second one. Because if I'm successful at keeping a meter off of my house, true, they don't know when I turn on the stove. But as you said, if his is on and his is on and his is on and his is on, they're all going through me and my ha my house well, and my, my family. Anyway. Is that my letter is not just specific to my house. It's broad. I mean, what I did is I said, public streets are public. If I'm walking down the public street, I have this in my letter. And I'm getting bombarded by this crap going like all, all over the place. I said, I have the right to travel. So if, if your meters are going crazy on me while I travel, I'm holding you liable. Because I want the right to travel, and I don't want to have to, to get bombarded by these frequencies when I travel. But like you said, even sitting in my bedroom, it's true. You in know, the bedroom, it's anywhere. I, did, I, put all that, I put this together really carefully. When I did it, I brought up, I made it as broad as possible, and, and you can take a few but, different approaches. But what I'm saying is, is what you're succeeding at, if you're succeeding at all, is hopefully stopping them from putting the meter on yes. your house. No, no, I want to stop it. If we get enough numbers, my optimism is to stop it. But if it. you don't, you're not really doing anything unless you're going to build yourself a Faraday cage to live in. But the optimism is, is I think, like the gentleman that on the screen, you have to do something as human beings. You have to do what's within. If you don't do anything, you're powerless. And spiritually, that's not a good place to be. If you do, if you have the capability to send a letter, and you're busy, and you can just send that one letter, my philosophy is just send the letter. It, but to do nothing is to be in a place of misery. Because to do nothing is not a good place to be. Take action. Take action. Do something. I poured a whole bunch of them. Oh, that's great. Yes. I was going to ask if you don't mind. No, I poured a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah, email Sandy. Yeah, you could have, I brought, I brought some today. This, a copy of all your letters, all Yeah, I'll send you all Sandy. So pass this around. I put it on the meetup, because that is unbelievable stuff. But then um, what I said is, why don't we get a group? My, my optimism is to get a group of people together. We'll do them as a package so we don't have this. Because I'm doing them all individually. Question to everybody here. Are you guys interested in doing the group letter? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Then what we're going to do is um, I will, through Andy, because Andy, you and Andy, you know, got, got yeah. together, put together a spot on the, on the meetup, literally a, an actual section on the meetup that will be relevant just to this process. The forms and everything will be on the meetup in the forms file with a link in the actual section, the actual discussion piece. Anything relevant, if there's going to be a meeting, getting it together, you've got a question, everything will be going back and forth in there, and we'll get you involved with this. I'd like to get you in on the page so you'll know what's going on. But this way we can do it. You give us a date you want us to get these set up. Yeah, and we'll do it. Everyone just prints their own yeah. and fills them out. You fill in your name. It's really simple. I made it simpler. It was a little bit more complicated. I try to make it simpler so it's not that complicated. And, um, will this be known for both electric and the water? And my other part of the question is, will it be, uh, will it be an opportunity for those of us who have already stupidly allowed us to do it? No, no, how did you know? So, we'll, we can do all that together? Yeah. I got yeah. stuff. Yeah. I got stuff. Okay. Oh, you're not stuck. I'm not stuck with the water because I rent. And my landlord said go ahead. Well, that's, the, the letter I did is like, that, the only complication is like, I knew this was Nassau County, so I, my, I live in Suffolk. I live in Huntington, so my letter had Suffolk County Water Authority, so I took it off because I figured it wouldn't be this group, but I didn't know who your water company is because you know in Nassau County, you have a number. Yeah.
The word, the worst, the, and this is the word of severity. Water meat is the least dangerous, but it changes the structure of your water because your water shouldn't be pulsed with electric. So every five seconds they're pulsing because I've done the measuring on the one in, in my house. And it's not in my house; it's in the, in the street by my house. And it, it changes the structure of your water, and it's the same concept as the gentleman in the back was saying, where the stuff travels through, but it's not as bad. The the gas one is. It's a one-way meter, it's not a two-way meter. One-way meaning it just gets red, so it's not as bad, but it's bad. The electric one is a two-way meter. It, it talks back and forth all day long. So it goes out that way to give the reading to the, um, the box, and then the box talks back to it. And, they, some, and it's beyond my, I'm not an electrician, so it's beyond, but it, actually it's a two-way, it's an interactive meter. The water meter, they just, um, I don't know what the future is, what their future plan is, with what they're doing, but they're just, they're saying they're doing it because they don't want to have to come to read the meter at your house and it's easier to drive by, which is, yeah, but they're not spending billions of dollars to try to save meter readings, it's, yeah. All right, quick, quick question, I'm just going to need to back up, what is the whole premise from the utility standpoint for a smart meter? And my next question would be, if anybody has recently had a smart meter installed, what, how does your bill look compared to your bill before you had the smart meter? In other words, what are they trying to do with it? Well, there's two things. One is, just because you have a smart meter now doesn't mean it's fully integrated. Because in order to integrate, like Fire Island is finished. They've already smart metered it. California is mostly smart metered. Smart meter means, they put a new meter on your house. That doesn't mean a lot because until they put the infrastructure in on the poles, which they're doing in Huntington, and they've been their trucks parked in Huntington every day in the same spot, sometimes four or five months. And what are they doing in one spot? Eight trucks from PSENG in one location, and they're digging up the roads. You can go to Huntington Village every day. The roads are getting dug up because they're putting the infrastructure in, and the infrastructure costs billions of dollars. So just having the meter on your house, you'll get this, if you want this, buy one of these, you'll see it pulsing. But it's when the entire infrastructure gets turned on, that's when the dangers, that's when it becomes dangerous. And what are they saying? They're saying they're doing it to save, they're only saying one thing, they're doing it to give you a way of you saving electric, by, and it's not true. They're saying that you can save electric because they're going to tell you exactly what you're using all day long, and they're going to give you a beautiful graph, you can go online and see, Say, okay, I used the stove at 2 o'clock, that's prime time. I could have used it at 10 o'clock at night. So that's what they're, they're saying that it's to save you electric. It's also, they're saying it's because it helps the infrastructure because they can turn your appliances off during the day when there's peak demand so that their infrastructure is kept in a constant flow. So in, long, in news, news day last summer, I don't know if any of you were impacted, they, took, they turned the air conditioning off in 11,000 homes. This was in news day because it was during peak demand. So this will give them the ability, they're saying it's to help you, help them. So they're going to turn your appliances off whenever they feel like it, to keep the constant flow of electric being delivered so their infrastructure is not overly taxed. So this is all documented in Newsday. Okay, so now if you don't have any smart appliances, then essentially no matter what they do, you're off their grid. I read my own electric meter and my own water meter. I fill out the little card and I send it in. You can do this. So for now you're okay. Okay, what? For now you're okay, but your new appliances, well, they're all equipped. So okay, in other words, TVs, TVs are yeah, it's all equipped. Cell are they identified as? So if I buy a toaster oven, does it come with some sort of identification that identifies it as smart meter compatible? I don't know if it does, but if you call the manufacturer, they'd say, they'll tell you if it is or not. I don't know if it goes in the box, but I think everything is, yeah, like, um, I don't know if the answer to that question, I think if you call the manufacturer, I think they're, they're not hiding anything, they're manufacturing the product. It's just like if you call the manufacturer of a smart meter, they'll tell you the truth, they'll tell you whether or not it's a smart meter and it has the capability of being a smart meter or if it's just a plain old meter, because I've had people call and they've given me straight answers. As opposed to the utility company, so that's they're saying that they're doing it to to help you, and to save you money, 
and to um, say beta readings, which will save you money too. That's the that's so what they're saying. The potential liability of this is, let's say you have, uh, I don't know, you have some sort of ailment where you need to keep your, uh, your house temperature. Uh, let's say it might be asthma, only person at a certain uh, temperature yeah. for for medical reasons, right? Pacemakers and even. Yeah. Right, and, that, and that's that's one thing, or whatever you could you name any number. Of yeah. Things, okay. So now, what you're saying is that are they actually admitting that they will have the ability to dial back on your air conditioner? Are they actually promoting that? Yeah, News Newsday is their spokesperson because they're putting it into the newspapers. They've given you notice. Newsday last summer said that they were able to turn off eleven air thousand air conditioners. I think it was like a thousand thousand. The article. And um, to save to save the infrastructure from being overtaxed during peak demand. Yeah. Newsday. Newsday. What? Basically, in order for them to give you to get your consent, they have to give you public notice. I don't get Newsday. Here's another reason for people not to subscribe to Newsday. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't subscribe to any newspaper. Um, I get all my information from my people that, that do, and. Um, so, uh, businesses at the same time, they're doing it everywhere. Um, they're going gang, gangbusters. All you have to do is, if you're in, I don't know about other towns, but Huntington, I speak for. Uh, Carolyn and uh, Andy live in Huntington, and the trucks that are there, they've been there every day for a year. Hey, not for nothing, but Iran's going to uh, fucking do an EMP over Ohio and devastate our country. I think we should be worried about stuff like that over this. Well